of uh, mental health films is going to start at 4.15, so don't worry. Oh, we're, we're already out. Let's go. Um, I don't have to stall anymore. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to bring out, or to introduce here, we have, um, of course, um, the Benedict's uh, Diner folks themselves. Um, John Diakakis is here. Which one of your kids is this? I'm sorry, this was a last minute add-on. Yeah, that's Michael. Michael. Michael, Diakaka. thank you. We have uh, the director, Anthony Scalia, thank you so much. And Jared Jacobson is here with us um, from uh, Mike's Words that you just saw. Um, to lead this conversation and hand things over to the capable hands of Peter LaBelle. Thank you all for coming out in the middle of um, protracted winter. <laughs> Indian winter. Um, Anthony, I'd, I'd like to start with uh, you and just ask um, how you got John to come out of his shell. Uh, a lot of hard work and turkey club sandwiches. Um, it was a... Um, I lived very close to the Bendix Diner, so I would drive past it often. Uh, had never been in, and then I stopped in one night, found John and this story. Um, it was incredible, and I asked him if he wanted to make a documentary. I believe he was a little reluctant at first, but uh, we became- I still hate every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Um, and we became friends, um, and then the pr process was a little easier. Uh, and it became a three-year journey, um, and slowly but surely, I think he came out of a show, particularly towards the end of the last year. We did it all for the kids. <laughs> and how do the kids feel about it? Um, well, Michael's over here. He could probably just tell you himself. But I think overall, all three kind of embraced it in a certain way. Uh, yeah, Michael? I think my favorite part of the documentary was just like annoying Anthony every chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Typical teenager. Great. I noticed that um, your your middle son seemed uh, perhaps the most uh, reticent, or did he not want to comment on camera very much? Um, you want to know something? Here's the funny thing. As much as Dimitri seems to be kind of like a recluse, although he talks to people that he just knows, he kind of, um, Tony Marotis said that. He goes, well, I know if they're here a second time, they must like me. So Dimitri, I think, follows that philosophy more than anybody. So even when, let's say, Michael and me and Tony would ignore Anthony over here, like Dimitri was still answering texts and emails, so <laughs> and at one point he even said, he goes, you know, Dimitri's kind of my favorite, even though he doesn't like anybody. <laughs> yeah, he was the most receptive. Um, he saw my pain. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Speaking of pain, uh, can I ask about the the waxing? Um, actually, I don't even mind. Actually, it's therapy. Because after like working all day today, I just had uh, Bergen, um, the Bergen record doing a big review. So this morning I got swamped with people. And you know, it's, some of it is kind of like genuinely people are interested in how you do these things. And then, you know, you have some that are just more, you know, hey, I know you, so I'm going to come today and just annoy you. Um, so it's a little bit of, you know, both. So today we were busy, so I was just thinking as you asking me that question, I really wouldn't have mind going and getting waxed right after this uh, day on Saturday. It just could probably do well for the soul. Thank you. Uh, and Jared, I'd like to know how you came to, uh, to do your film. Um, yeah, so basically, I a few years back, my, my wife actually came across an article in the local newspaper that Mike had done this film, the film that I, you see a few uh, clips from. 
in, in this short documentary, uh, Rolling Romance. And I grew up, my dad grew up, I grew up with, my dad had muscular, a pretty severe form of muscular dystrophy. So it really resonated with me when I saw, oh, there's this, this film. Because up to that point, I had never seen a, a film like that. I, I saw that his film, Rolling Romance, was in a, a local festival. So I was like, yeah, I got to go check this out. And that day, uh, Mike was in the audience and I met him. And, you know, we kind of uh, struck up a, a friendship after that and I did kind of a, a one point kind of a bigger budget film and Mike actually contributed to it at that time and and we were like yeah we you know I, I'm like Mike we should just do a little short documentary and kind of tell your story and so we we kind of kicked around the idea and Mike's the, the type of person that it'll just be on a whim so one day he's like hey I got a couple hours here or whatever you know <laughs> Uh, can you be over here with your camera and gear? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, and that, that's how it came about, yeah. Yeah, well, one thing I really like very much about both of these films is, uh, is the humor in them. Uh, dark sometimes, uh, uh, and, and, and very, very funny, uh, which um, I think sometimes, well, I feel we don't see enough of in work about and by Work, uh, revolving around disability, so I uh, and Mike in particular, he's he's pretty dark, uh, but it's, it's cool. yeah. No, he his sense of humor is yeah, like you said. Um, I mean, he's he has a, a, a pretty unique sense of humor, and um, I think that that really came across in the short film. And the thing that also really came across to me after. Like I said, growing up with uh, with my father, who had a severe form of mus muscular dystrophy, was when Mike kind of talks a, a lot about the more of the men the mental aspect or the kind of the the struggles emotionally that he had that are real, kind of related in a in a way to the the physical disability. And uh, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, I I just never that was kind of um, eye opening to me because as a kid I never really thought about that with my dad. You know, think of that perspective. So I thought that was pretty unique, and I, that resonated. Yeah. And um, John, are, are you uh, still frequenting the comedy clubs? Not as much after COVID. It's been kind of a little slow-ish. And then what happened was there was one in my backyard, Bananas, and that was sold to someone in Philadelphia and just never got my foot back in the door because I was kind of like the club by your backyard that everybody still kind of knows you and you MC or feature. And, you know, so I think at some point, as, you know, it opens up again, I think I will, you know, get myself more and more back out there. I thought that the comedy was important to show in the film. And I remember when John told me that he had done stand-up, um, I hadn't seen him perform, but just telling jokes around the diner, he was so funny, making everybody laugh, and um, that was another thing that we really pushed to have in the film, was like, get him doing the stand, do the stand, do the stand, but we filmed it right before COVID, it was like, yeah. end of February, um, right before everything shut down, so we had just gotten that in, luckily, and um, I think it's important in your, uh, your way of coping, Right, I mean, you you use humor a lot. You use humor around people to make them feel more comfortable because you're good at it. I'm not worried about it at all. But I just find sometimes now, after the shifts and the diner does kind of drag you down, that you know, at the end of the day, you just want your bed. Yeah. So, at 55 years old, you know, it does take a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, concentration mentally because I don't write anything down. And Anthony will tell you like checks and everything like that. So um, it's just almost like now I feel like, okay, people know I'm funny. You want me, you can know where to get me and come get me too, because I don't want to even figure out transportation. It's kind of as it seems, but you know, like I just kind of like maybe as you know, I evolve around away from the diner, I think I will then embrace it a little bit more like, hey, why let's not try to make this the next new career instead of 
you know, having just a stand duck gig or to just to, you know, let off some steam instead, like, as my kids get older and the financial responsibility is not there anymore, maybe I might just decide, hey, let's just do more stand-up comedy and it doesn't matter if I pay my bills or something. <laughs> I have to say, I do love the food porn in the, fil in the film, though. Really, really well shot and done. Thank you. Any questions for the audience? I have a question for the young man. I was trying to think of something. Just, I think you're the only one who hasn't spoken. Yeah. As a daughter of a father with a disability, it's a mental health issue, not, not the same. Um, and having had the advantage of working with him, what advantages do you feel as though you have having your dad and growing up working? I mean, I've learned a lot of core skills from being at the diner, and also, like, if you take into account, like, his disability, um, you become more attuned to help other people with disabilities, so it's, like, easier. Like, for example, there'd be some, like, deaf people that would come into the diner, and you would, like, they'd be confused on how to communicate, so you would try and, like, figure out, like, various ways. Would it be, like, a uh, iPhone or, like, notepad? Well, good time for yet another question, but I'll, but I'll, I, I wanted to share just about the films. First of all, I, I got a pitch, and if you want more disability comedy, we have our comedy night at the Gotham Comedy Club on Sunday night, so please join in for that. Um, I was here, I was watching, as you all watched um, uh, um, the second film, um, uh, I think it's probably pronounced Calissi Day, the film about the mosquitoes, um, another great dark comedy that is so unique. I hope you noticed that he made the film himself, wrote, directed, and starred in it, um, and uh, it's just a beautiful story. I'm going to share about ben the Benedict Steiner that um, um, at the beginning of COVID, I, I, I came there where there's a, there's a trampoline place not far away. I was there with my kids, and we were looking for a place to eat, and we showed up there, and John was wearing a dog mask. Um, <laughs> and and uh, was doing the whole show, and I was like, all right, we're eating here. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then when we saw this movie, we were really proud. I was like, they, there was, I knew there was a movie there. Um, and I'm also proud to share, of course, that Rolling Romance um, uh, screened here just a few years ago as well. So uh, it's good to connect all those dots. Thanks for mentioning that, because I remember I told Mike that, um, that Mike's works would be showing there, and he's like, oh yeah, Rolling Romance was yeah. here. Was, yeah, I'm so glad he remembers us. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to yeah. ask really quickly, what about Manny's Phantasma? Is that, uh... um, I know he's, he, uh, he did that film, and then he, he, um, the other, he's done a couple feature films as well, one, the, the clip in there, and then I was just talking to him the other day, and he said that he had just finished a short film on, uh, about a, it's an ICU love story, is what he, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but that's the, the yeah, that's the topic. Happens all the time. <laughs> Folks, our next um, set of uh, short films, uh, our mental health short films, um, also fantastic. Stay for those. You're all welcome to stay. Um, stay with us all day. We have many more programs. Um, how do you get to the Benedict's Diner? <laughs> uh, don't have me drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Route 17, ba -dum -bum. Uh, right on your way out of the city. You're 17, you should be able to, to pass it. You can't miss it, but you might not be able to pull in because there's a lot of sharks. Um, thank you for having uh, our film. And when I was looking at, um, when I was actually making this film, I passed by my uh, mentor over there, Nick Blair, his house. There was a poster for this festival as I was making this film. And I said, oh my God, this is perfect. And one of, one of the best honors to have it play here. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank us. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank, Thank you all for being here. And uh, join us for more. We're here through tonight. And don't miss Straighten Up and Fly Right, our, eight, our late night feature tonight. That's if you like the dark comedy stuff. See you all soon. We're going to get this next one started um, precisely at 4.15. Thank you very much.